welcome back to a brand new book haul. So in this video I have a massive stack of books. I don't even know how many is here but it's quite a lot. Um, I've separated them where I can and these are the books that I've hauled in the past month. Which is a little ridiculous, I'll give you that. Well I'm pretty sure it was like a month and a half. I'm pretty sure it was like July and this half of August because I'm filming this halfway through August. So it's fine. I've split it into categories as best I can, so I'm just going to go through. I've bought so many books, it's not even funny. Um, we're just going to pretend that this is a normal amount of books for people to buy and we're going to just move on. I did buy a lot more this month. For some reason, I'm doing 31 books in 31 days, I'm sure you all know because I'm all shut up about it. Um, and it means I've read a lot of my physical TBR, specifically my romance. Um, my shelves are a bit of a mess. You can see my coffee and my squash, oops. My shelves are a bit of a mess from me pulling books off them, but these are my TBR shelves. And this is my romance one and it was so depleted. And I was like, I'm not getting through 31 books if I don't have some romance to read. So I did end up replenishing my stock. <laughs> so a lot of romance in here, a lot of fantasy. So I'm gonna start with the books that I was sent by publishers first so I can get them out of the way. First of all, we have The Younglings Fire and Magic by Helena M. Craigs. Craigs. I was sent this by Love Book Tours because they were kind enough to let me be on their read along for this. All through the month of August, you will see me putting up questions on my Instagram for this as I'm reading through it and you will have seen in a past vlog a couple of weeks ago me opening the PR package for this and it was so cute so nice so thank you so much to the author for that and so much to the tour company as well very very happy to have a copy of this and it is signed which is just so nice and sweet secondly we have from the publisher waking the witch by Rachel Burge I didn't love it you can see my thoughts on my Instagram or my goodreads but Eh, it was just kind of bleh. It's about this girl who has been in the foster care system after she was abandoned by her mother on the side of a road or something. And she finds, she tries to go and find her and she lives on Badsea Island, which is a Welsh island. And when she gets there, it's like no phone signal. It's all very creepy. Her mum's insistent that there's witches trying to kill her and that's why she gave her up. This contains like so much Welsh folklore and mythology. So I was really, really intrigued by this. And if you are looking for books with more of that in it, if you're Welsh or just interested in more Welsh culture, I would recommend this one because it was interesting for that purpose. So thank you to Hot Key Books for this one. Next, I was sent The Drowned Goods by Emily Lloyd-Jones. Thank you so much to Kate at Hodder for this one. Um, they were basically looking for some Welsh uh, reviewers, which is me, to read this Welsh fantasy story, which is just so fun. Like, I really love this. It's very much, um, I think it's more, it's very much more character based than it is plot based. I mean, there's a plot and it's entertaining, but it's much more about the characters and like the twists in this and the betrayals were just so good. And so fascinating and I, I yeah I just absolutely thoroughly loved this I read it I think all in my Starbucks like I literally just sat there and read the entire thing so good I would definitely say there's like a big lack of world building and things so be aware of that going in but I just definitely had a great time with this one definitely recommend this one but again this is not a review I just very glad to have hauled this one thank you again and finally from Harper 360 I got Bindle Punk Bruja by Desa Deer Deru by Desideria Mesa, Mesa? Sorry if I butchered that. Um, I haven't read this yet, but I'm planning to this month. Very interested by it. Basically following an illegal jazz club um, run by witches, which just sounds so fascinating to me. Every time I go to pick my read, I wanna pick up this one and there's something else goes in front of it, but I'm just so, so excited to get into this one. I think it's going to be an amazing read. So thank you very much to Harper for that one. Moving on to gifts. First up, I received Hide by Kirsten White from Connor. Thank you so much, Connor. I've already read this one. I gave it three stars. The first half was much better than the second half. But it's a horror story following this girl who... She, like, survived her family's massacre. And then she enters a game where you have to hide to win 50,000 pounds. And because she hid during the massacre, she feels like she will ace this. But when she gets there, it's set in a and like an old, not circus, what's it called? With the theme park, theme park. And um, she starts to realise that it's a lot more sinister than a simple game. And yeah, it goes from there. I feel like it lost its way a little bit. 
but what, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> I really, I'm really glad to own this though because I've been wanting it for absolutely ages. The artwork is gorgeous, so I knew I needed a physical copy. Thank you so much, Connor. Then Jade came to visit me at the beginning, no, at the end of July or midway of July for her birthday. And she brought some books with her, it was her birthday and she brought me books. We did like a little swap of some additions because she was having a clear out and so was I. So first of all, I got Book of Night by Holly Black. I'm really glad to have this because I feel like I have wanted it for so long and so many people have said that they don't like this book that I was then hesitant to spend 15 pounds on it. So when she said she was getting rid of it, I was like, thank you very much. I will take that off your hands. <laughs> So I finally have a copy of this. Then I have the Illumicrate edition of Her Royal, Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. Uh, it's very obnoxiously yellow. <laughs> oh, this isn't Illumicrate, is it? It's the Fairy Loot Adult. I'm lying. Yeah, Fairy Loot Adult. Sorry, I take it back. Um, it is signed and all that good jazz. So yeah, I'm very, very happy to own this one because it was one I was trying to get my hands on. And finally, I think this is Owlcrate. It's a forgery of roses by Jessica S. Olsen. I really don't know much about this. I didn't know about it before she said, do I want it? And I was like, I'm not gonna lie to you. That is a very beautiful cover. Yes, please, I will take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it could be bad. But yeah, that's the cover. Then we have the naked hardback, which is just beautiful. Gives me night circus vibes though. <laughs> and then we have reverse dust jacket art, but I could not tell you what it was about because I actually do not know. Red sprayed edges. Uh, hopefully something I will, again, get to pretty soon because I am intrigued. And finally from Jade, you will see above me here. One of the most generous things that's ever happened to me in my life. Jade gave me her Akatar dust jackets. I have been wanting these for god knows how long since they came out and i didn't get my hands on them and then people were reselling them for extortionate amounts that i will not pay for books book jackets nothing i will not pay it and she was getting rid of them and I was, she was like do you want them i was like mm, no i can't afford them <laughs> how much do you want because i can't afford them she was like no i'm giving them to you and i was like so jade thank you so very very much Look how good they look. Akatar now has its own shelf. It actually has two shelves because there's another one further down with all my extra copies. But wow, look how good they look. I hope you can see them. I think you can see them. Wow, thank you so much, Jade, for, for not just those, but also the books. Thank you so much. I feel very, very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. <laughs> Moving on now, the rest of the books I have are ones I've bought myself. Some are secondhand, some are brand new, so let's get through them i guess first of all i went to the works and the works have some good sales if you have a works near you that you haven't already checked out go and do so i picked up the bride test and the heart principle by helen huang um no i have not read the kiss quotient it is there on my tbr shelf i have not read it but these were there for three pounds each i think and i thought get him a basket <laughs> What is wrong with me? Anyway, I now have these because I thought even if I don't love the Kiss Quotient, as long as I like the writing style, these will be different romances, I think. So then there was a really good sale on Amazon, which I don't know how they were selling them so cheap, but I found some books for one pound. First of all, we have The Staycation by Cressida McLaughlin. McLaughlin? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, again, don't really know what this is about. I just know it's a romance, I think. And it says, is their perfect escape closer than they think? But truly, I am just got excited the fact it was a pound when I picked it up, sue me. I also had just been in the works the week before looking at these books. So when I saw them for one pound, I was like, right, okay, well, I'll pick them up. First of all, we have Confessions of an Alleged Good Girl and then Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. I was going to pick these up and then I read the synopsis and I was like, they sound a little bit cringy, um, so I'm not going to. But then for a pound, I thought, you know, I want to see what the hype is about. This one's floppy. This one's not. But this one's floppy. I'm in a good place right now. <laughs> so I thought for that price, I'm going to pick them up and give them a try. I mean, because even if I don't like them, I know that this is perfect for my sister's age bracket. And she is so getting into reading right now. So I will hand them over to her if I don't like them. 
So there was no loss really on this one. Again, from the works, I picked up the Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. Um, it says the TikTok, I've seen on TikTok on there and everybody's saying it's been seen a lot on TikTok. I've only seen it once. But I just fancied it because it was three pounds. I have a problem, um, we're all well aware, but it does actually sound really interesting because it is a sports romance and I do really enjoy sports romances. I feel like they're just my cup of tea. So I'm very excited to read this, even though other than that, I have no idea what it's about. Next we have Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. Um, Kwan, I have not seen the movie or the TV show, whatever it is, and I've not read the books. Oh my God, the words are small. Oh my God. Um, but I was in a like, this place called Trago Mills when I was on holiday. It was like this weird shopping centre place that had £1.79 books. And I was like, I feel a lot about this one. I'll pick this up. And at the same time, I actually picked up another book, which was Tarnished City by Vic James. And then I came home and found out this was the second in a series. So not pleased. If anybody's read this, can you tell me if I can read it at the start, like on its own? Or do I have to read the first book? Because I have no idea. I'll probably just get rid of it if that's the case, but still. So I picked both of these up because they were cheap. I was on my holiday high, so bought them I did. <laughs> I also have no idea what either of them are about, so I can't be very helpful on that front, sorry. Again, in the works, I picked up A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. I picked this up with Jade when she was visiting and I read it the same day and absolutely loved it. What a book. This was just like, in my opinion, The Love Hypothesis which is exactly what I needed. And I already want to reread this. So it's revolving around Harper and Dan and they're both like in dentistry school. I just, it was so cute. Like Dan was just smitten by Harper and I was smitten by Dan um, or smitten with Dan. I just, oh, wow, what a romance, what a cute romance. Love this, definitely deserve the hype that everybody's been giving it. And I have wanted to pick this up since before it was released after seeing um, paperback princess reading the arc so I was so glad to finally pick this up and read it because I'd forgotten how much I wanted to read it and it was so worth it. Guess what again from the works. Shocker. I picked up To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo because it was £2.50 or in the three for six but I just bought one. Um, I've been on the fence about reading this for years like since I got on booktube because I feel like Everybody thinks this is like, it's Marmite really, isn't it? Half the people hate it, half the people love it. And the things I feel about it are like, it's slow and stuff and that is not my cup of tea. But I've been so intrigued by it and it's on Prime on Amazon for free. And I kept downloading it and then not reading it. And I was like, I just want to get my hands into this and try and see for myself. So that is what I did. I saw a cheap copy, I picked it up and hopefully I'm going to get my teeth stuck into this and I'll be furious if I don't, because it's been years in the making at this point. Next, some charity shop reads. Um, two different charity shops. The first charity shop I found Snow Falling by Jane Gloriana Villanueva. I can't remember. Um, obviously that is not a real author. If you are a fan of Jane the Virgin, the TV show, you will know that this is the book that Jane writes in the show, because Jane is a writer. And I've heard terrible things. I've heard it's a really bad book, you know, but it's not meant to be a good book. It's meant to be like a, a, a fun, fun merch thing from the show. Um, I don't know who actually wrote it, but like the picture on the bag is like Jane from the show and everything. Like they've got all out and I'm just, I'm just intrigued. I don't know. I'm not sure when I'll get to this. I'm not sure if I'll even never will get to this. Hopefully so. But I just had to pick it up when I saw it because it's 50p and I thought, I need that. I, I, I knew it existed because I have heard someone say something about it before, but I kind of thought it was that kind of thing that you'd got at an, at an event and then you didn't just buy, but apparently no, you can just buy them. So I'm so glad to have my hands on this. Oh, wow. Cool. And I'm a massive Jane the Virgin stan. I think I need to start rewatching again. So this will be really fun to have. In the other chat shop, which was when I was in on holiday, this chat shop was one of the best things I've ever seen. It had like copies, every book was a pound. And it had copies of like the Southern Book Club, the Southerners Book Club's Guide to Slain Vampires by Grady Hendrix. It had all the new releases. It was insane, but I had to calm myself because I had to fit my stuff in the car with everybody else's stuff. And I was like, it's not gonna fit. So I had to be calm. So I only got three. The first one I got was House of Hollow. This is the arc. 
Um, I didn't care whether it was the ARC or not. I would have actually rather the original covers. I think I'm gonna go buy the original cover again. I actually used to own House of Hollow. Connor bought it for me as a gift. And the weirdest thing happened with this book. If you've read the story, you'll know about the plants in this book, flowers and stuff, and like growths of fungus. Well, I was reading this brand new copy of this book and I went down to see my mother who lives an hour and a half drive away. You know, my family lived down there, so I was driving. I put my book in my book pouch, you know, my book sleeve, and I drove. Uh, my water bottle had spilled on the book in the in the car and I didn't know. So when I got there, the first thing I did was pull my bag out and was like, oh, my thing's spilled all over my book. How annoying. Bear in mind, the most, the longest it could have sat there was an hour and a half. I pulled the book out. It is filled with mould, riddled. How does that happen? Because I swear mould takes weeks to fester. It happened in an hour and a half. I've, I have to see if I've still got the pictures. I know I sent pictures to Connor, so I was like, look what's happened. Um, but it was like a year ago, so who knows. But I was gutted, obviously I did not keep the book. It was full of mould. Um, so I just finished reading it on Kindle or something. But I'm gonna need to rebuy the original cover because I much preferred it. But I thought that was such a weird story. And like the fact it was this book as well, like if it was like this cute romance, I'd have been like, how weird. But it was the fact it was this book, which if you've read, you know it'll talk about stuff like that. So, um, scared, scared. But I picked that up while I saw it for cheap and thought I'll do for now on my shelves. Next up, we have the Brothers Grimm Fairy Tales. This is the illustrated edition. Again, it was a pound. I actually binned the dust jacket because it wasn't in the best condition. And then this was the naked heart bag underneath. So why not? <laughs> I mean, I don't need it. Uh, it is a little bit like yellowed and a bit, bit dirty. It's not too bad though. But for a pound, I thought I really want a copy of this. Like I have a copy of the Brothers Grimm Fairy Tales on my Kindle, but like that's not good enough. I need an illustrated big hardback edition for my shelves, for the collection. So that is what I have now. And then the third book I'm most excited about to have found again for a pound. And that is the Peter Pan, like illustrated by Mina Lima edition. Basically these are like, 20 something pounds um so they're pricey now this is not in the best condition hear me out like it is a little bit battered but i was like mm, a pound i'm gonna take it i'm gonna take it right now i'm not bothered very beautiful like there's like interactive things inside let me show you so like maps and stuff there's like things you have to turn little newspaper article clippings that you have to like pull out and i'm not gonna go through it all because it's hard work but i'm really glad to own this and really excited to have this on my shelves especially as i would never pay 20 quid for it so winning and the next one we have is soul of the sword by julie kagawa this is the us edition i ordered it on ebay after i finished shadow of the fox and loved it unfortunately i did not love this one as much i gave it three stars i have read it but it's fine because it's pretty and I'm glad I have the matching US edition to my first book. Oh, another one pound book from Amazon that I forgot about is Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. I think this is a like space sci-fi thriller. Again, I may be wrong. It just says fiction. So who knows? But it sounds very thriller to me about this girl who has to go onto a planet that is suitable for humans. Again, I don't know much about it. I saw people on TikTok saying, look, one pound books and I, I ran. I ran uh, from the works again. I picked up Twisted Love by Anna Huang. I am so excited to start this series. I've had the Twisted series on my Kindle for months. Now that everybody seems to be obsessed with it, and it's like brother's best friend, hate everyone but you kind of story. And I'm very, very intrigued. And I cannot wait to start this, so. I picked up a copy and I'm going to be starting it probably this month. It's the final book from the works. I picked up November 9th by Colleen Hoover. I just recently read Ugly Love and then someone on TikTok said that Miles and Tate are mentioned in this book and that was all it took for me to be like, okay. And I picked it up and I bought it. Um, love this cover versus the old red and white cover. So much happy with this one. Um, I think that's because it got published, right? Yeah, properly published. I don't know. But I much prefer this one. Colleen Hoover, I know, she's controversial. I've loved two of her books and I've met one of the books. So I'm excited to see how I feel about this one. I just feel like nobody writes toxic or heartbreaking romances the way Colleen Hoover does. 
yes they're problematic i'm well aware some of the things in it are problematic and i don't love that but so are most authors at this point there's ba rarely ever a book i read that i don't find somewhat problematic in some way okay so the three books that i have left are all from book boxes from all from fairy loot i think i've now actually cancelled my fairy loot subscription i just wasn't happy with the standard of things anymore so these will probably be the last three fairy loot books i ever haul unless i buy them second hand so this is kind of bittersweet because i've been having my fairy loot subscription for two years but it's just how i feel first up we have this vicious grace by emily fiede i'm sorry you can barely see that because of how yellow it is oh gross so we have a yellow cover versus the traditional brown yellow sprayed edges with lemons on them it's very yellow um we have customized end pages this is one of the reasons i cancelled i'm much more of a first dust jacket art person um but you know i know it's not everyone's cover so that's fine and then the naked hardback is beautiful it's brown with stenciling and foiling on it or stenciling it's, it's stunning i might even like bin the dust jacket who knows gorgeous but I'll wait until I see how I feel about the book first. <laughs> then we have The Darkening by Sanya Mara. Um, this one's actually not one I'd heard of, but it does sound somewhat interesting to me. So I think I will probably read it at some point. Again, no dust jacket art on the back. Again, another bee's my left. <laughs> um, but we have a little bit of stenciling on the hardback. It's a nice blue color, the lovely sprayed edges. It is signed and some end pages that are okay they're nice so yeah i'm not 100 percent convinced i'm gonna read this one or maybe i'll just get rid of it but i think i might like do a try a chapter or something before i make up my mind because i'm just not sure on the synopsis but the writing style might be for me so we'll see and then the next one which is my last fairy loot box um was violet made of thorns by gina chen and this has beautiful spread edges like sunset mm comes with a ribbon bookmark um it's a signed book plate instead of actually signed i need to put that in the book again end pages there and yeah the naked hardback is phenomenal really that is stunning um and if this wasn't such a pretty cover i would just keep this on my shelves it is stunning it is really really nice so the synopsis for this again doesn't wow me i'm not impressed like I, i'm not that's not a book i'd pick up if i didn't get sent it by fairy loot but i definitely think because of how beautiful the edition is i'm just gonna pick it up anyway <laughs> and um see how i feel because wow it's beautiful there you go i've put, I put the book play in the book now so there is quite the mess around me now that's for sure um but those are all the books that i hauled in july and august i don't know like 25 to 30 books uh pretty bad um i will be chilling out i promise i will chill out a little bit but yeah <laughs> I, you know me i love books i can't help it i love book shopping i love book buying moving on from it anyway thank you so much for watching this video and i shall see you in the next one bye